Hello everyone and welcome to a new PD tutorial where I'll show you how to create a robotic voice sound effect inspired by the R2-D2 character from Star Wars. If you want to know more about it, I'll leave you a video I made about this topic where I show how Ben Burt, the sound designer from the original Star Wars trilogy, made those great sound effects. So check it out and let me know in the comments what you think about it. We are going to use a simple OSC and the frequencies produced uh, will be randomic. So we can use a metro that triggers a random, let's say 7000. Then we can generate a trigger node with float and bang. So the bang is going to trigger, nope, the bang it's going to trigger a random 2, while the uh, second output of the trigger is sent straight to a pack float float. The random value is then multiplied by a certain number that will generate in a few minutes. And finally, the pack is sent to a line tilde, which goes inside the OSC tilde. Each time the metro produces a bang, we want to send a time change so that we can uh, randomize its timing. On top here we receive time change that triggers a random 3. Then we select 0 and we generate a random that produces binary values, so 0 and 1. The binary random is then linked to a trigger bang float that goes inside a division module. So the float value is divided by a certain value. Okay, we can clamp its range from 100 to 400 and we can send period. Here we receive period and the period is divided by the binary random, the binary value. Uh, I don't want to divide our period by zero, so I apply an offset, so plus one. And the final result that we, we can visualize inside this number box, it's sent inside the second inlet of Metro. I want the Metro to start when the patch is loaded. So we can use a load bank. And of course, if you want to trigger the metro on and off manually, you can apply a toggle as well. As I said a few minutes ago, the binary value produced down here is then multiplied by a certain value. That value is the period. So here we can receive period. And our frequency uh, generation system is now finished. So each time the metro produces a bank, it will trigger the random that is going to generate random values between 0 and 7000. We can apply an offset here as well. So we can avoid very low frequencies. So let's say 50. Oops, plus 50. Then the trigger nodes uh, execute first a bang that triggers a binary random generator. If the value is zero, the value zero is multiplied by the period. So the second um, float value inside this pack will be zero. And the second value is the interpolation time. While the first one value inside the pack which is produced out of this output. It's the actual frequency 
so we can determine whether to interpolate between frequencies or jump from one frequency to the next one with no interpolation at all. And finally, the, this pack is sent to a line which needs two values to work. The first is the target frequency and the other one is the interpolation time. Now, let me send the OSC tilde to the uh, DAC and I think that we can have a listen. If you don't like that percussive sound that you hear when frequency is changing with no interpolation, you can set this section with a default uh, interpolation time that can be very short. If you want to visualize the interpolation produced by line, we can use a snapshot tilde. We update it with uh, a very fast pace, so every 50 milliseconds. We can send, let's say, clock. We can place it on top here and here we receive clock. The signal produced out of line tilde, it's then sent to snapshot and we can apply just a number box to visualize the values. Let me increase the width size of the number box. OK. Up to this point, the audio signal produced by OSC is constant, so we can apply an envelope using a similar method. So we can recycle the receive uh, time change. So each time the metro is producing a bang, we want to trigger a random 2. We select 0 and we we'll link it to 2 random 2. The first random will produce the actual amplitude value. So we can send it to a pack float float. This, while the second one decides whether to interpolate or not between amplitude values. So same process as we made here. So we multiply the signal by our period and we send it to the second inlet of pack. The two values stored by pack are then sent to a line tilde. And here we can copy the snapshot to visualize what uh, it's getting out of line tilde. Great. Now we send the OSC to a multiplication tilde. Let me send it to the uh, rightmost inlet. The line tilde goes here. The final output to the DAC. Now that the core system is done, we need to apply a modulation. The one I want to use is a ring modulation and to make it, to make this sound more alive, more human, I'm going to multiply the audio signal produced by this system by my voice using this microphone. So we can use an ADC tilde. But my microphone is in the second input, yeah. And then I'm going to use a low pass filter to cut off all frequencies above 200 hertz, 250. We take the audio signal shaped by the envelope. We connect it to one more multiplication sign. Inside the other inlet, we apply the uh, ADC. 
and I can send it straight to the, the AC. Now I'm going to switch off my main microphone and I'm going to talk inside my auxiliary uh, microphone and you'll hear the final result. Now it's up to you to experiment using your own voice, of course, or you can use recorded audio files. Uh, ben Burt, the sound designer from Star Wars, used recordings of birds, whistles, and other concrete sounds as well. So really, it's up to you to experiment. This is a very uh, powerful tool that can produce really cool sci-fi sound effects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I invite you to give a like and subscribe to support the channel. If you want, you can write a comment in the comment section down below. I'm really curious about what you think about this patch, if you tried it, if you found any way to improve it to make it sound even better. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.